go on. Well, it's very sad occasion, but uh, mm -hmm. you know we're, we're pleased to be here to be actually be part of it. What was he like? Norman, funniest man in the world. Yeah, he's the funniest man in the world and his family. They're, they're it's brilliant, brilliant guy. Fabulous fella. You'll miss him. Oh, what? Yeah, the whole world will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you what your fondest memory is? Sorry, Amanda, what's your fondest memory of Norman? It, uh, it, uh, no, <laughs> there's too many. There's too many. We've got so many. We did six six summer seasons with him, you know, and, uh, and Frank Carson, the, the three, the you know, little large Frank Carson, Norman Collier, was, uh, like say, six years on the track. And uh, unbelievable. It, just, it was a laugh a minute. It really was where Norman was. He wasn't just a funny man. He, he was a fun a man full of fun, and that was it. Uh, we've lost a, a comedy genius today, that's my thoughts. I think he was a fantastic comedian. He was a comic, weren't a comedian, he was proper, he was a, he was a genius. All of his stuff original. In fact, Norman gave me and Tommy our first catchphrase, ever. And that was over 40 years ago, and we said, you'll do for me, Tommy, you'll do for me, cocker. And that was his, and he gave it to me and Tom. What's your favourite memory of it? My favourite memory was, we came, uh, we were in a, a place called the Mersey Hotel in the dressing room. And we'd just been on me and Tommy, and he came in and looked at me and laughed. He said, you'll get better, lads. Tom. And that was my answer. What was, what was he what like? He, what was he like, Norman? Like Tell this, you, Norman, like he said to me, 50 years ago in Beverly, 18-year-old kid, I did a talent competition at Bernard oh, yeah, Club. Yeah. And he said to me, he was a judge, and he went, pack it in. Forget it, he said. He was right. Silly later, nobody no, knows. No. Anyway, we're we'll busy at the minute, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Have you got some other memories you want to share with us? Here, we ran out of petrol once. Who did? Me and Norman on the A1. And he bought a car uh, and, and he put he put petrol in the diesel. He did? Do you remember that one? I do, why? Oh, That's a bit see. boring. No. Have you got anything else you could tell him? Let's see. Tom, Tom, your thoughts? I mean, uh, you, you're giving you a choose Tom, today, aren't you? What, you never knew him, did you? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what would he, I don't know him. What would he be saying today? No, he'd, he'd been proud of the turnout. Oh, he would, been fantastic. Oh. Rather, rather than have a church full of people, just, yeah. just the, the, the right yep. number of frogs here. I can guarantee Everyone you... admired him. You, you've never heard him say a bad word about no. anybody. Nobody. Nobody, nobody a bad word about, about him. If he wasn't, if he was here now, he'd be doing the chicken up and down Hope the up here. Yeah. That's what I thought I'd do that. It was his cap, see? Yeah. I think you look great. Absolutely. Look different. Uh, what did you love the most about him? There's so many of you here. It's like, is he like comedy royalty? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the best he threw in that the audience may not see, but we could. Yeah. We did a tour with him, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Not long ago, actually. Uh, I love that bit with the chicken where it's waiting for the dawn to crow and it looks at his watch. <laughs> it was a comedy genius, he was. Are the microphones going to work today? Up, working. Fine. Some nights you might show whether it's getting That's right. Yeah, we've got, anyway, we're going to go in. To be honest with you, I was all, I put all my black stuff on the bed, me, me, me black shirt, my black tie and all that. Then I looked on the internet, Norman said we wanted you to be colourful, so I had to go at the bottom of my drawer for my clown's outfit. Yeah. <laughs> So you're celebrating his life today? Well, of course, yeah. I mean, I did the 1986 season with him in uh, Blackpool. Loveliest man you've ever wished to meet. Fantastic. I said to him one day, I'm going I'm to lose some weight, Norman. I'm going to start walking 30 miles a day. Get to rid of some cal calories. He said, right, give us a ring when you get to London. <laughs> <laughs> he was a funny, 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 funny man. Loved him, loved him. Should be good today, shouldn't he? Well, I mean... Sim quite simply was the nicest man ever in show business, but he also was one of the most inventive comedians ever. You know what I mean? How could you get laughs? What made him sit down and think, if I come on and walk like a chicken, I'm going to get laughs? No, only Norman could have thought of that. He was so inventive and so terrific, I think. What will you be saying in your tribute today? You're paying tribute today, aren't you? Uh, yes, I am, love. If you give me your name and address, I'll give you a mention. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I mean, you, you must have worked with him. What are, what are you up? Well, I worked with him many, many times along with uh, Russ here and what have you. He was uh, the original alternative yeah. comedian. That's right. Forget about yeah. the rest of yeah. them. He never told a joke in his life. No, never. He just had fun. Everything he did was funny. Nice man. Yeah. But one of the best, as you say, one of the kindest, the mm. sweetest. 
And the great thing about it was he enjoyed his own work and his own comedy, you know. I mean, we, we all knew what was coming. I mean, he was the comedian's comedian. That's they always got it in one. And the interesting thing is, although we knew what was coming, you still had to laugh because we were laughing because Norman was laughing. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I was telling him about some... We had stag comedians and blue comedians which took over the business and what have you. And I used to tell Norman about them and I used to say, the amazing thing about them all, Norman, is they all finish with the dirtiest joke you've ever heard in your life. And then they say to the audience, Good night and God bless. <laughs> 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 I said the comic who used to do all loads of rude guys, and he finished up by singing It's My Mother's Birthday. <laughs> 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 this seems to be a unique occasion because obviously we're saying farewell to a man you're all very fond of, yet no. everybody's laughing. Well, absolutely, Norman. When we you... want it that way. Yeah, it's and incredible. when you ever think of Norman, you like. Yeah. Why do you think we're all not wearing black ties? Yeah. Yeah. That's right, that's right. We're here to celebrate I've got this the life. Celebrate the life, that's that right. My brother bought me from America, and it's all clowns. I thought that was a nice one. <laughs> Here's the thing as well, listen to this. I just found this in the paper this morning, and I cut it out, and I thought, I've got to read it to you. And it says here that rent a sob are funerals. Mourners now are sort of... Um, I'll have to put my glasses on. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll see see right. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm wearing, he always gives me tips for horses, so I'm wearing this to commemorate him. Oh. And to remember the tips, he's got no trousers. Yes. <laughs> Rent a sob at funerals. The mourners have been hiring trained performers to cry at funerals to give the impression the deceased was popping. At £45 an hour, Renter Mourner in Braintree, Essex, hires our professional sobbers who will have been briefed on the life of the deceased. Ian Robertson, founder of the service, said bookings were up 50%. <laughs> <laughs> the Norman would fall about it. He'd love that. He'd love that. Yeah, yeah, he'd love that. that. <laughs> is, it, is it true that, you know, he, that he must have helped develop, you know, your career, those of you that, you know, the next generation mm -hmm. from him, I guess? Well, Norman did, uh, did a series with me, The Madhouse, the very first he Madhouse. The first, yeah, in 1980, yeah. he played my dad. Yeah. And he was, I can remember bits now where he was knitting and the wool was coming direct off the sheep. <laughs> the back of the sheep, he was <laughs> Norm, oh, a lot of Norman's ideas. He was such a creative man. That's right. Yeah. Said. I mean, yeah. a genius and inventive and creative. And nobody can imitate him. You know, it was. Um, you, it was you, unique. You, 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 yeah. you, you can't copy him. You know, only Norman could do that. Mm. Uh, just uh, most lovely man I've ever met. N never had a bad word to say about anybody. Um, just wanted to make people laugh. Never wanted to move to London or anything like that. And he's. You know, he, he gave me and Bobby a great routine. Um, I was singing a song uh, in a, in a uh, pub, that's how long ago it was, and, um, and Bobby went out in a blackout, and I'm singing the song, and I'm singing it to Bob. And Norman came up after the show, he was top of the bill, and he came up, he said, listen, lads, he said, when Bobby goes in blackout, he said, have a lighter with you, and put the lighter on so your face should shine through the blackout. And that's what he did, and we've used it ever since. Well, I have to say, for about four or five years, we dropped the song now, so we don't use the light. But Norman was an inspiration to everybody. Inspiration to everybody. He'd be sadly missed, sadly missed. But we're here to celebrate him. We're here to celebrate him. That's what we're here for, and he's, he's just a wonderful man.